Now, if at any point you inadvertently close down the vertical grading editor, you can simply go to the Roads tab, click on the vertical grading button, and then left click on the alignment for your cul-de-sac or select it from a list. What we're going to do is just move the vertical grading editor to one side. If you are using multiple screens, then ideally you just position this onto another screen so you can see what's going on in the drawing environment around your cul-de-sac. You'll notice that we have IPs being drawn every meter, which was our spacing on our cul-de-sac, and these IPs are being created as far as the center point of the cul-de-sac, and you can see with the tracker on screen how that's being set up. If I continue moving my mouse around, you'll see that we have IPs again being generated at the center point all the way through to the very end. This is the extent of the automation that was set up in the cul-de-sac form. Now these IPs are protected. We're unable to edit them. If I left click close to one, you'll see that the contextual ribbon is grayed out, meaning that we can't make any edits. If I click on close and then try and delete one of these IPs, you'll see it's protected. Even if we say yes to delete, it will come back. So there's no way of actually removing this. Now, as we've done this, we've actually made an edit to our cul-de-sac. You'll know that you've made an edit to the cul-de-sac because two white circles appear, which means that there is no longer automatic design on our cul-de-sac, meaning that as we go and change the vertical design of road two, the cul-de-sac design that we've currently got here will remain in its current position. What we want to do is make sure that it is remaining in automatic. And in similar fashion to what we did with the curb return module, we go up to the ribbon where it says user design, and then click on automatic redesign and apply and exit. Those white circles are now removed, meaning that as we make changes to row two, the cul-de-sac will continue to update. If we wanted to reduce the level of automation, we would do this by going back to the cul-de-sac form. So we're going to see how we can make this change. We're going to go back up to the roads tab, network strings pull down, and then click on cul-de-sac. Now this time, rather than pressing enter, that would create a brand new cul-de-sac. We're going to left click close to the alignment of our current cul-de-sac we've created. If we wanted to reduce the level of this automation to say just a meter, what we need to do is put a chainage which represents a meter from the start of our cul-de-sac or even the end. We can do this by referring to the cells up at the top. So the moment the start chainage of our cul-de-sac is chainage 347.241. So if we only wanted a meter of automation, let's just type in very simply 348.241. We're going to do the same at the other end, 348.241. As soon as you make the change, all you need to do is click on create update string and then click on close the VGE will have automatically updated. Now, depending on what values you've put in, the extent of the automation is based on spacings of every one meter. So the software has managed to get one IP coming in and it's actually managed to get two at the end. Depending on the extent of the automation, you could put a very small number if you want. This now gives us free reign over the design of the cul-de-sac all the way through if we want to. Let's now right click on the vertical grading editor to open up a cross section. And we're just going to move this off to one side so we can see what's happening. And again, make sure that if you go to the display tab, you set a nice exaggeration. If you haven't already got a good default, um, maybe one or two is a good number to have. And make sure that the cross section is nicely zoomed so you can see what's happening. The important part of this cross section is the inclusion of RDUM. So referring back to what we did in the curb return module, the RDUM code is automatically created for us when we use auto. If you use your own template, as we reviewed in the curb term module, it's important that that RDUM code also exists on your own template. The remaining codes have all been connected up as we wanted to. Now, you'll notice that there is subgrade being applied. So let's just have a quick look at where that subgrade definition is specified. And again, it's similar to the curb returns. It's on the design data form. So again, rather than going to the ribbon, we're going to pick the design data form directly from the cross-section window. 
in the form you'll see the template that's being applied is auto and we can go in and change that if we want making sure that the rdum code is added to the template we've got our batter conditions and this is the one in one that is derived from the active settings again in the same fashion as the curve return module and the subgrade definition which in this case is using road 6m which happens to be pretty much identical to the road 1 template that we're also using so that's how the subgrade has been applied underneath let's close the design data form close the cross section window and the vertical grading editor if you wanted to make any edits outside of the design data form such as deleting we can use the delete string button found on the ribbon when we created our cul-de-sac we used a spacing of one meter and it may be the case that one meter is maybe too large or in some cases with very small radius values on a cul-de-sac that value actually isn't big enough to make a change to the spacings you can only go through the resample sections button so we're going to go ahead and do that now and then left click near the alignment of the cul-de-sac in there we have the section spacing frequency so this is the same editing tool that we used for road strings um, so if we wanted to we could even change the surface which is being referenced in the background we can change the spacing for the tangents and straight so for example if you've got a very long straight on your cul-de-sac maybe one meter is too short you can have an increased uh, straight value and if you have very small radius values or fillets on your arcs then you could reduce the arc value accordingly let's click on cancel and then finally if you wanted to rename your cul-de-sac make sure you use the rename tool particularly if you're using Civil 3D if you want to rename the alignment make sure that you use this rename tool let's now have a look at the design in model viewer